Today I'm going to be measuring the cylinder bore of my 2017 250XC which has 295 hours on it and comparing the measurements to a brand new cylinder. In the KTM service manual it notes that uh, cylinder bore measurement should be taken in X and Y axis. So X could be front to rear and Y could be across the cylinder. And it also notes that uh, you should take measurements at three different heights. However, as you can see here, because the ports are in the central part of the cylinder, it's pretty much impossible to measure the bore there. So what I propose to do is just do measurements at the top and bottom of the cylinder. And also in the service manual, there's a guideline for the cylinder bore dimensions for both size 1 and size 2 cylinders. So both of the cylinders I'm going to be measuring today are size 1 and uh, the minimum spec is quoted as uh, 66.4 millimeters and the maximum is 66.412 millimeters. And these are two cylinders I'm going to be measuring. Uh, they're both 2017 250XC cylinders. Uh, the one on the right is a brand new zero hour takeoff of my friend Phil's bike. And the one on the left is my cylinder and it's done 295 hours. There are many different methods to measure the cylinder bore. Uh, by far the cheapest method is to use a telescoping gauge like this. So these parts are spring loaded. Uh, you position it into the cylinder bore and then using the screw on the end of the handle uh, you can lock this. And then you just measure across here using a micrometer. Uh, you can make uh, very accurate measurements using this. But uh, my experience is uh, the measurements are very repeatable and you need to repeat both uh, the bore measurement and also uh, measuring using the micrometer multiple times to get an accurate reading. Um, so it's quite time consuming and also you need quite a bit of experience to get a good feel of uh, when you've got the gauge positioned in the uh, bore correctly or not. Um, it's only two points so it, it takes quite a bit of uh, feel to get that right. Uh, so you can use these, but uh, as I say, it's often not very repeatable and uh, can be a little bit inaccurate, especially if you're not used to using this. I use these uh, when I'm machining parts and want to measure, measure the internal diameter of bores I'm making. And uh, depending on what accuracy you want, uh, this can be a good choice for that type of work. So the method I'm going to show you today is uh, using a bore gauge and this is one I have. It's made by Mitsutoyo and I'll include the part numbers of all the measurement equipment in the video description in case you're interested. One of the key features of a bore gauge like this is uh, due to the wheel-like uh, parts on the side, they don't actually rotate but they're shaped like wheels. It's one here and one here. Um, you rock the head to and fro, I'll show you later. And uh, by doing that, it uh, basically self-centers the head in the center of the bore, allowing you to uh, get the uh, bore dimension very easily, and it's very repeatable. Um, so you've got these parts contacting the, the bore. Also the anvil here, this is replaceable, and uh, I'll show you what uh, anvils it comes with. And then the measurement part is actually this. This moves in and out and drives the dull indicator. And this is the dial indicator I'm using, and it has a high resolution, so one mark is one micron, and it has a total travel of one millimeter. And this is the set of the anvils that come with the bore gauge, and using these you can measure up to a maximum of 150 millimeter bore. Um, my bore on uh, my 250 is uh, just over 66 millimeters, so I'm using a 65 millimeter um, anvil plus a one millimeter washer. And to set up the bore gauge, you need a micrometer, which is capable of reading the bore dimension. And I'm using a Mitsutoyo uh, 50 to 75 millimeter digital model. So before you use a micrometer to set up the uh, bore gauge, you should check the calibration is correct. So micrometers larger than 25 millimeters always come with a standard bar. Uh, this one's 50 millimeters. And you can see the reading on the micrometer is reading exactly 50. Um, and it's got a uh, clutch mechanism which applies the correct force. So rotating that, um, it looks uh, spot on. So next I'm going to adjust the micrometer for setting up the bore gauge. And uh, I'm going to set the micrometer to the nominal uh, bore dimension of 66.4 millimeters. Um, one thing to note when you're making these measurements, um, they're very sensitive. 
uh, to temperature. So uh, the standard temperature for these measurements is 20 degrees Celsius. So you should try and um, get close to that. Um, a couple of degrees either side is uh, probably not an issue, but uh, if you're like 10 degrees hotter or colder, it uh, can have a uh, influence on the uh, accuracy of the measurements. Okay, so now we're ready to set up the bore gauge and the dial indicator has a scale which rotates around the outside. So you can adjust that and uh, adjust the zero position. So we've already set up the micrometer to the nominal bore dimension of uh, 66.4 millimeters. And then you place in the, uh, the bore gauge and check the zero. So I can see there um, it just stops at zero. So it's set correctly and I'm ready to do my actual bore measurement now. Okay, so to do the actual measurement, uh, you simply insert the bore gauge into the bore and then rock it to and fro. And for my top measurements, I'm doing it about uh, 20 millimeters from the surface. And by rocking it, uh, you find the center or the maximum bore dimension. And uh, then you take note of uh, the measurement. So anything to the left of uh, zero is uh, larger than uh, your reference. So right now I'm reading about uh, 66.410. Uh, so it's about uh, 10 microns larger than my reference reading. So this is the new cylinder and uh, measure the front to back and then the side to side and then uh, flip it over and measure the front to back and side to side again about 20 millimeters down from uh, the bottom surface. So I'm going to repeat the measurements for the new cylinder and also for the old cylinder. So here you can see a summary of the measurements for both cylinders. In all cases, the measurements for the 295 hour cylinder measure more than the new cylinder. Um, if you reference the measurements to the maximum specification of 66.412, uh, the front to rear measurements for the 295 hour cylinder were slightly out of spec. So uh, at the top, it was two microns larger than the max spec and at the bottom, one micron larger. So very, very slightly uh, larger than that max spec. Interestingly, the side-to-side -side, uh, measurements um, at the top were both smaller than the minimum specification. And it showed quite a, a uh, significant amount of taper from the bottom to the top. Um, I'm guessing that's by design because the, the new cylinder is also very si similar. Um, in the way it tapers. So possibly as the cylinder is hotter at the top, um, they make it slightly uh, smaller at the top. Um, anyway, that's an interesting thing to note. And uh, I'm guessing all of the cylinders are pretty similar in that respect. Also published in the service manual are the bore dimensions for size two cylinders. And they're approximately 12 microns larger than the size one cylinders. Um, based on the measurements I've taken, and also because I can still see the cross hatching in the cylinder I have, um, my uh, thinking is that uh, I can safely continue to use the cylinder, and definitely for one more piston, so another 150 hours, and then I think I'll remeasure it and then uh, consider whether I should get it replated or not. So with regular maintenance, it's great to see that KTM Nixil plated cylinders can run for a high number of hours with minimal wear. Some of the key things to reduce wear on the cylinder include maintaining your air filter. So you want to clean them regularly, um, make sure they're oiled thoroughly, and also seal in the air box correctly. If any dirt gets into the cylinder, it's going to wear the uh, cylinder very quickly. Um, also two-stroke oil. So there's many different types of oils. Uh, choose a good one and make sure you mix it at the recommended ratio. I use Mot Motrex Cross Power 2 mixed at 60 to 1 and I get very good results with that. So that's what I use and I'm going to continue using that. But I know there are other choices too. One other key thing for minimizing engine wear is uh, cold starts. So I know some guys, they start the engine and then they blip the throttle uh, so they rev it to the maximum. And uh, in my opinion, that's about the worst thing you can do for engine wear. 
the piston and cylinder uh, heat up at different rates. So uh, when the engine is still cold and you're revving it a lot, when the clearances are, are tight, you can create a lot of wear. So my method for cold starts is to start the engine and then uh, maintain RPM above uh, idle but uh, not revving it hard at all until the engine is thoroughly warm. So I hope you enjoyed the video and if you've taken your own measurements and uh, whether they're similar to, to my measurements or completely different, I'll be interested in hearing from you in the comments.